Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. The title of this short video is Candida Infection Pathog Pathogenicity Example. We're going to talk about aldehyde toxicity and free radical formation. So one of the things about candida is its ability to become invasive. So if we look and understand that a yeast cell including candida, which is a type of yeast, can exist in an independent unicellular state. Of course, it's existing with other yeast cells in larger colonies, but if we have good intestinal flora and good biodiversity within a microbiome, it generally tends to keep the candida cells intact and you know, in a non-invasive form. But when environmental shifts happen in the gut, candida can, be, can become invasive and it grow its, grows its hypha, which can penetrate through the apical membrane of the epithelial cell or move through the tight junction between the epithelial cells leading to leaky gut. And then below that, it starts to engage the immune system and that can produce different cytokines that can drive a different or a much broader immune response inflammation, etc. One of the things that also happens when candida becomes invasive is the production of different organic acids. One of the most common ones is arabidose. This is something measurable off an organic acids test. And so arabidose elevations is an indication of the invasive nature of candida within the digestive system. But I want to talk about arabinose in a little bit different way here, in that the chemical structure of arabinose as a sugar has part of it, a functional group, which is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen with a hydrogen, what's called an aldehyde. Now aldehydes, when you look at them biochemically, and there's many different types of aldehydes, as a functional group on different types of chemical compounds, but they can be difficult on our body to metabolize. So formaldehyde, for example, or acetaldehyde, which we'll talk about here shortly, can be toxic. And so in, in general terms, a lot of our detoxification capacity in our body is, is meant to deal with aldehydes. So we know that aldehydes can damage our DNA. They can create what's called reactive oxygen species, lead to lipid peroxidation, for example. It can damage the mitochondria. They can deplete glutathione. One of the things that happens in people who overconsume alcohol, so alcohol intoxication, can actually create a lot of aldehydes that over time can seriously damage the liver and other organ systems throughout the body. So ethanol or alcohol gets converted to acetic acid through the reactions of a chemical called alcohol dehydrogenase and then eventually acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. So ethanol gets converted to acetaldehyde through alcohol dehydrogenase. And then the acetaldehyde gets converted to acetic acid through the actions of acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. And there are different types of acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzymes. But it's that acetaldehyde stage that drives a lot of the toxicity. In fact, they figure that in alcoholism, it's the acetaldehyde effects that is probably what's causing much of the hangover effects that people feel. The unpleasant symptoms, the facial flushing, the nausea, the rapid heartbeat, for example. Well, because aldehydes are reactive, they can generate reactive oxygen species. And we know that these oxygen species can form what are called free radicals, where we're getting these unpaired electrons as part of the outer orbital of these particular radicals. And in real simplistic terms, if we just look at a free radical, so the outer valence shell, or what's the outer shell called a valence shell, of an element contains or wants to contain eight electrons to be most stable. So here we have a stable molecule that has eight electrons in its valence shell. 
and so that, that is most stable. So that's kind of the goal. So a free radical, which is unstable, will look around for places that it can grab an electron from. So in this particular case, it grabs an electron from DNA. So to, to make itself more stable, but it leaves damaged tissue behind. Now this could be DNA, this could be protein, this could be a cell membrane, it could be something else. But that in essence is what's happening. The reason we take antioxidants, ascorbic acid, other antioxidants, is essentially to try and fill that voided space where that electron doesn't exist or electrons don't exist on the free radical, whether it's a hydroxyl ion, whether it's a, um, a hydroxyl radical, whether it's a peroxide, superoxide anion, whatever. We know that in the autism community, many autistic individuals have problems with candida and other yeast organisms. They also have a lot of toxins that accumulate in their body because of these fungal organisms. This was an article that came out a few years back that was looking at aldehyde toxicity in autism. And one of the interesting things they discussed in here is that, and we know this to be true in autism, but it's also true in other people who have underlying chronic candida problems, is various nutrient deficiencies. Arabinose, the, our body will use certain nutrients to try to improve its stability or prevent its binding to other chemicals. B6, biotin, for example, lipoic acid. What this article was talking about is because of the presence of aldehydes, we can start to run a deficit in things like B6. And that's a big problem because B6 is very important in the methylation cycle. It's very important in neurotransmitter production of dopamine, for example. We can run into zinc deficiencies, magnesium deficiencies, B1, folate, essential fatty acids. This is important because B1 is thiamine. Thiamine is critically important for cellular metabolism, particularly with regards to mitochondrial activity and in glucose metabolism. Zinc, we know, is important for immune function, digestion, magnesium is found throughout the body. So it's quite possible with accumulating levels of candida toxins over time that we start to run deficits in various nutrients. And that certainly is true within the autism community and other individuals as well. If we think about liver detoxification, much of phase one liver detox pathways are geared to help metabolize aldehyde. So in this particular case, we've got this oxoreductase enzyme. Here you can see it's the P450 system, acid aldehyde, croton aldehyde, benz aldehyde, butyl aldehyde. So they're very much involved in metabolizing fat soluble compounds and starting the conversion to move them over to more water-soluble chemicals. Because ultimately, the way that we get rid of chemicals is converting them into water-soluble, or what's called uh, you know, you know, uh, hydrophilic compounds, so that we can excrete them in our urine or in the stool. But phase one, so much of the activity of phase one liver detox is to deal with chemical aldehydes. And so one of the things we have to consider when we are looking at candida intervention is not just what botanical we're gonna use, but it's to understand that the liver is attached to the biliary system, is attached to the digestive system, we have to support the body with healthy water, right? So we don't want to be inputting toxins. Plus, it keeps the kidneys filtered. It you know, keeps our body hydrated so that we can dilute some of the toxins. We need to make sure that we're eating organic foods, whole food diet, reducing chemical consumption as best as possible. And it makes perfect sense if we start to think about the mechanisms of action and the physiological support that our body needs to deal with a candida problem is a multivitamin, multimineral support along with good antioxidants. B6, 
because we know that our body can be producing aldehyde, particularly acetaldehyde. Essential fatty acids as well, good healthy fats. And it also gets to the heart of liver and bile support. Bile is critically important for not only fat digestion, but bile is necessary to stimulate enzyme production to help with migrating motor complex activity in the small intestine. That also helps support large intestine health and allows us for the elimination of stool so that we're not accumulating toxins in our bowel that get reabsorbed through hepatic, uh, the, the portal venal system taken back into the liver. Antifungal medications, botanicals, all of that can be is important too, as well as the use of binders to help us bind some of the toxins that accumulate in the digestive tract and prevent their reabsorption because they get reabsorbed, taken back to the liver, and then they get recycled. So the more that we can lessen the impact on the liver, the, the better we're going to have the ability to help control the toxins that are flowing into the digestive system. And so it's very much understanding the functional aspect of how our digestive system works and not just focusing on candida intervention with regards to, okay, again, which antifungal, you know, how much to give and for how long. That is important and certainly an important discussion in the greater context of candida intervention. Now, all of this and more is discussed in great detail in our candida mastery course, very in-depth course that goes through multiple aspects of candida and fungal infections um, and moving beyond just the, you know, which botanical for which scenario. We do talk about that, but we also talk about the various pathogenicity mechanisms of candida and why it's important to understand, you know, how those things work, why they do what they do, and why it's important for us as practitioners to be complete practitioners when we're dealing with patients with chronic illness. We also have a service through a website called Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds. This is a open for healthcare practitioners who can, it's a membership site. You can schedule with myself or my partner, Dr. Trancatella for one-on-one -on -one consults, lab reviews, clinical troubleshooting, different questions. We also have a lot of educational material in the Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds website as well. There's a forum for ongoing questions. We do have live clinical rounds as well as a library of videos. Now, the functionalmedicineclinicalrounds.com site is not a course. It is a membership site, but it does have educational material. We have many courses through Integrated Medicine Academy, including the Candida Mastery course. One of the other things in the functional medicine clinical rounds is a archives of what are called clinical data sheets. These are one page PDF documents that are available for download that review a particular test or markers on certain tests or just give clinical pearls on what these markers mean, how things line up clinically, et cetera. So all of that can be accessed at functionalmedicineclinicalrounds.com. If you have any questions about our various courses through Integrated Medicine Academy, including the Candida Mastery course, you can email us at integrativemedicineacademy at gmail.com. The website is integrativemedicineacademy.com. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. Thank you.